Hello for you and welcome back again. Uh, our topic today is average rate of change and our goal I can use the slope of a secant to find the average rate of change if we are given a graph, a table, or a functions equation. Slopes of secants or average rate of change which we're going to abbreviate to this nice little a rock. So when you hear me talk about the a rock I'm talking about average rate of change. So rate of change is how one quantity compares to another and we're going to think about speed first because that's the most notable rate of change in our life. Uh, average speed is the change in distance over the change in time. Now if you think about that, usually when you're talking about average speed, if I said it took me uh, six hours to go to Windsor and Windsor was 600 kilometers away, you would naturally assume that I was going about 100 kilometers an hour to get to Windsor. Okay, you took the change in my distance, which I told you was, whoop, whoa, let's get an actual pen here, not a highlighter. Okay, you would take the change of distance, which I told you was 600 kilometers, and divide it by the change in time, which I told you was six hours, and that would tell us that I was going 100 kilometers per hour. Now, you don't really have to write that down because I'm going to do something a little bit different here. Okay, but that's the average rate of change. Now, notice that that doesn't account for all of the little stops and goes along the way. That's the average speed. Obviously I didn't just start in one spot, go 600 kilometers at 100 kilometers an hour. No, I probably had some turns in there where I had to slow down and then sometimes I had to speed up and maybe on the highways I was even going more than 100 kilometers an hour, although I wouldn't do that because that's illegal. Okay. Um, but that's the kind of thing we're talking about. It's average speed because it doesn't take all that into consideration. The only thing it takes into consideration is where I started, where I stopped, and how long it took me to get there. So we're not concerned with everything that happens along the way. Oh look, it's a trip to Windsor. Example one, a trip to Windsor took 3.5 hours to drive 250 kilometers. What was the average speed during the trip? So the a rock, the average rate of change, which is speed, in this case, is the change in distance over the change in time. And the change in distance is 250 kilometers, where the change in time was three and a half hours. Which means that this particular trip to Windsor, um, my average speed was... 71.4 kilometers an hour, 250 divided by 3.5. Okay, And this one makes a little bit more sense because usually your average rate of change is going to be a little bit less than the speed limit uh, because you're going to be doing a lot of stopping um, or turning or slowing down that kind of along the way and you shouldn't be going any more than the maximum speed limit so you should have something that's below the maximum speed limit. So in general, if we have two quantities changing, say x and y on a grid, the average rate of change will be the change in y over the change in x. So in this case, if we were going to graph a speed time or distance time graph, uh, the y would be distance and the x would be time, and we would have kilometers per hour. Now, since we're doing this in general, I'm not talking about distance and time, I'm simply talking about this graph, where this over here is the x, this over here is the y, and what we're doing is we're finding the distance between them. Now I don't care what goes on in between. All I care about is how much the x changed and how much the y changed. So the y changed as I move from this dot to this dot, the y changed this amount, and as I move from this dot to this dot, the x changed this amount. So basically what I'm doing when I find um, the change in y divided by the change in x, I'm finding the rise and the run. I'm dividing the rise by the run. So what I'm actually doing is finding the slope of the line that joins them. And that's called a secant. I'm finding the slope of the secant line. A secant is a line that cuts a curve in two distinct locations. So I'm finding the secant the slope of the secant. So here we go. This says we're finding the slope of the line joining those two points. What else do we have here? How do we find the slope of a line? 
Well, we find a slope of a line by doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I would need to point this out again. My silly little program is get putting superscripts where they should be subscripts. Of course, you know that this is y2 minus y1, and it's probably fine on your printout. Oh, actually, you don't have this on your printout, so uh, make sure you write them as subscripts. Okay, uh, so it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 if this point, this our second point, has coordinates x2, y2, and this point down here is our first point, so it's x1, y1. Why is this our first point? Because it comes first when I move from left to right on the grid. Remember, you always read a grid from left to right. Okay, so we're finding the slope of the secant. We're taking the value of the function, the y value of the function, and finding the difference between the beginning and the end point, and then dividing it by the difference between the beginning and the end point for the x's. So let's have a look at a couple of different situations. Find the a rock using a graph. Uh, what is the average rate of change during the first 12 seconds of this graph? Well, during the first 12 seconds, we start here, and here's 12, so that will be right here. So I'm actually finding the slope of this. I don't care what went on in between. I don't care about all of this stuff. Those are just details. I only want an average. I don't want it too detailed. I just want the average rate of change. So how do we do that? Well, we f to find the AROC, it is the rate of change. You learned that way back in grade 9, talking about rate of change. We want the slope of the this line here. So we need the change in y over the change in x, or in this case we actually know coordinates y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So up here my y is 8 and my initial y was 0, so I need 8 minus 0. And since it's the first 12 seconds, I'm going to go along here, I'm going to get um, 12 minus 0. So it's 8 twelfths, which is reduces to 2 thirds, or 0 0.67 if you care to. Now what is this? This is a distance time graph, so it's in meters per second. And you can leave it as a fraction if you want. Okay, let's have a look at the next example. Uh, finding the A rock using a table. What is the rate of change of money within this account for the whole six months? So I've got a month and I've got a bank balance. So we want to find the rate of change during the whole six months. So the average rate of change, and remember we're not concerned with the details along the way. We want the change in Y over the change in X. And in this case, month, that's the thing that's holding steady, so that's our X value, and the bank balance um, is the thing that that changes. The bank balance depends on the month of the of the year, so that's our y. So we want to take the change in y over the change in x for the whole six months. So I have to do y2 minus y1. Let's write that down again. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in this case it's going to be 2700 over 2500 minus 2500. 2700 minus 2500 divided by 6 minus 0. 6 minus 0. So 2700 minus 500 is 200 divided by 6. And that's going to be 33.33. And since this is a bank balance, that's dollars per month. So what does that mean? Well, it means that since this is a positive value, the bank balance has increased on average $33.3 a month. Now that's an average. Obviously that didn't happen. It went up, it went up, it went up, up, down, down, okay? There's lots of stuff going on in between, but on average it increased $33.33 a month. So for part B, it says, what is the rate which money is changing in the account during the first three months? Well, now the first three months, I need one, two, three. I need this block here. So I need to figure out 
what my y2 minus y1 is there. So a rock equals the change in y over the change in x. And if we take a look at this, um, the change in y, it's gone up $600. You can do the y2 minus y1 if you want, but with this one it's kind of easy just to look at it and see what the increase is. And over here it's obviously an increase of three. So in the first three months it has increased by $200 per month. So obviously something happens after month three to um, drop our balance again. Uh, these ones you should probably have a statement for, but I'm not going to waste your time by writing a statement down. Next question. A projectile follows a parabolic path according to this given function, where HD is the height in meters after a horizontal distance of D meters is traveled. What is the average rate of change in height during the first 11 minutes of the flight? Now you got to be a little bit careful with this one um, because we don't have any values before we can actually pick them. Here we have a formula that's going to let us get them. Uh, a rock is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But if we're being more specific here, um, our x2 minus x1 is actually going to be a d2 minus d1 because we don't have x's here, we have d's. And our y's are going to be the value of the function at each of these x's. And so the way we write that with function notation, oh, I forgot the subscript one, would be h at d1 uh, minus h at d2. So that what that means is we're going to have to actually figure out the value of the function uh, at each of our d's. Now for part a, our d's are the first 11 minutes. So we're going from 0 to 11. So I know those. I'm going to say d goes from 0 to 11, so I'm going to go 11 minus 0 on the bottom. And now we have to figure out what h at 11 is, so I can subtract h at 0. So we can do that. Uh, I'm going to write it down. Hopefully you remember how to figure out the value of a function at a given value of x. But we want h at 11, so that's going to be negative 0 0.09, uh, 11 squared plus 0 0.9 times 11 plus 2 and that evaluates to that evaluates to 1.01 .01. and then we need h at 0 because that's our d2 or sorry a d1 it started at 0 in the first 11 minutes um, so our h at 0 that one's easy h at 0 if I plug 0 in here and 0 in here all I'm left with is 2 so when we put that into the function over here, I'm doing 2 minus 1.01 .01 over 11 minus 0 is just 11. And 2 minus 1.01 .01 is 0 0.99 divided by 11 is 0 0.09. Now this is in and you got to be careful with this. <laughs> this is going to sound kind of weird because both of these things are measured in meters. Meters and meters. So this is going to be the in meters per meter. Okay, which sounds kind of weird, but okay, now part B is done the same way except now we're going from 5 to 8. So our this is going to be our x2 and this is going to be our x1. So to get our a rock, again we need um, the h at d1, oops sorry d2, I got these mixed up over here, d2 minus d1. Don't mix those up, they have to line up with the ones underneath it. Uh, so h at d2 minus h at d1 and over d2 minus d1. And remember, these are a value of x's, and these h at those x's are the value of y. That's just sort of the definition of function notation. And so our d2 minus d1 is going to be up here. Um, 
where I said these are the x's or actually the d's. So it's going to be 8 minus 5 on the bottom. And then you have to actually figure out the d's. So we need d at 8, or no, sorry, not d at 8, h at 8, minus h at 5. Let's see if we can get h at 8 all in one go on the calculator. I'm going to pull that up so I can actually see our function. So I'm going to pull up my calculator and I'm going to type in 0 0.09 in the negative times 8 squared which is 64 uh, plus 0.9 times 8 which was our d plus 2 is 3.44 so that's 3.44 minus an h at 5 h at 5, let's pull this up so we can see this thing again. h at 5 will be 0 0.09 in the negative times d squared, so that's going to be 5 squared, which is 25, plus 0.9 times 5 plus 2, which is 4.25. 4.25 over 8 minus 5. And if we evaluate these, this is what we get. So in it's actually decreasing on average in the first uh, or, or in from 5 to 8 it's on a decrease and from uh, overall from 0 to 11 it's increasing. So something happened between 5 and 8 that made the function come back down again. But again, we're only worried about average rate of change. So um, we worry about av we only worry about the beginning point and the end point when we're doing these. Okay, that actually wraps up this lesson. You had a few questions to do, um, and that's it.